Hello, I'm Sally Pointer. Today I would like to share with you some Neolithic textile processing tools that I'm working on as part of my dissertation for my master's degree in experimental archaeology. Now, I'm making this video in mid-June, but the story actually starts way back in February when the leaves were off the hedges and I could get out and raid thorns. I've been really lucky this year with the blackthorn spines. Do you see this long leader? That's pretty much just a year or so's growth in a hedge that's normally cut back by a mechanical hedging tool. And on these fairly young spikes, you can get really big thorns. Now, if I'm lucky, they will just break away really straightforwardly and you can collect a handful. Look at the size of those. I do need to peel them. That's best done fresh. That's not a bad handful of thorns. That'll keep me going for a while. I just need to sit and peel those over a cup of tea. There's always a cup of tea. Makes everything better. So I'm in the middle of peeling these thorns now. You can do them just with a thumbnail. It's actually really, really easy just to scrape the bark off. But because I've got quite a lot to do, there's 40 in that pile already, I've been using a little flint and just holding down with one hand, of course it's holding the camera at the moment, quick scrape, it comes off every bit as easily as it does with your thumbnail, but it saves your thumbnails. It's only a minute or two's work to deal with this little pile of thorns. Now they go to dry until I'm ready to use them. These thorns are all dried now. And in the intervening time, I've had a think and I probably didn't really need to peel them all. But you know what? It's absolutely fine. Peeling them does ensure they're not going to snag on the fibres and it's all going to be about the points doing the work. What I'm not at all sure about are whether the originals were peeled or not. That really isn't completely clear. Some of them have got long snaggy bits where they were broken off the branch. Actually, it's of a little tweak will just sort those out. So I'm just going to go through them and make sure that there aren't any really big traily bits, any big snaggy out bits. Make sure that everything is in good order. And I'm going to see what a bundle of these looks like. They're different lengths. So I think I'm going to want the longest ones in the middle and the shorter ones around the outside. But I'm just going to sort them into, I don't know, longish and shortish piles and check those snaggy bits for starters. After cleaning up this bundle here, which are approximately eight centimetres long, that's a really good length for this project, we have got uh, 32, I think I counted in there, which is actually a really nice number. Those feel nice in the hand. I could hold them like this, I could hold them with my hand over the top. Obviously they need levelling up. There's a few shorter ones, which I think I will incorporate around the edges. I think there's 10 of those, so 42 thorns in total. These incredibly long ones, I mean they're, how long are those? Eight, uh, they're over 10 centimetres long. Do you know what? I don't think I need them in this project. I think I'm going to save those for something else and they will come in useful. There are some other types of thorn comb that I can experiment with. So we're going to put those to the side for the moment and we are going to focus on these bundles. They are going to need tying together. And if we have a look at the pictures of the original ones, some are quite simply lashed. Well, I could do that but at least one of them has a centre lashing, but then also the outer layer are a little more carefully lashed together. I'm gonna to have a go at that. So to do that one, I'm gonna need some cordage. One of the cordages that's very frequently found on these pile dwelling sites is lime. And it is entirely possible that that's what these combs are for processing to start with. So this is a little bit of lime bast. I'm going to do a Fairly standard reverse twist two ply cord. Not quite sure how much I'm going to make, so I'll make a few feet of cord. This is the same method that you can see in lots and lots of my other cord making videos. I am going to concentrate on making it a nice cord because I'm hopeful that these are going to last through quite a bit of use and I would like 
I'd like to be able to enjoy it. And I think they're going to be handled by quite a lot of people. So the usual thing with cordage, if you can add in fibres little and often, you'll always get the best result. And I add in by laying a new fibre right across the bundle and twisting it in. That means it's less likely to slip. You're also going to have fewer lumps and bumps and sticky out bits. So I shall just carry on with that for a minute or two. And then we shall assemble this. I've switched to a different colour backdrop. I think it's probably easier to see what I'm doing against the lighter leather. So I'm coming to the end of my cordage. Some people like to tie a knot in cordage. If you've done it properly, you shouldn't have to. There you are, that's not going to come undone. That is, I measured it a second ago, about 85 centimetres of cordage. And it is very roughly, well, it's two millimetres thick. So that's really quite a nice thickness, thick enough to be really 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 strong thin enough to be flexible is this enough for this project well we will find out i'm certainly not the first person to ever reconstruct one of these what's interesting is to see whether we come to the same conclusions in the end so let's put this together i think i think i'm going to start just by gathering these into a bundle and i think if they're going to work the way we believe they work that the important thing is to make sure that these points are roughly similar in height. So we'll do a bit of arranging with the smaller ones around the outside and the fattest ones in the middle. These little root ends, I think, are going to help lock everything together and stop things twisting in practice looks that's pretty good all right and then these slightly smaller ones they're not much smaller they're just a tiny bit smaller can go fairly evenly around the outside again and yep yeah, so far so good having looked at the surviving tools and you don't get the impression that a huge amount of time has been taken putting these together. So I want them to be nice and to work and to last, but I also don't want to fiddle around with it too much. Right, let's just start just by doing a bit of a lashing around the middle. And I think I'm going to take advantage of that little loop that you always get at the start of a piece of cord to make a nice slidey knot. In terms of the earliest cordage, that probably represents one of the first snares that's out there. But it's also a really, really good way of tightening and putting some pressure on a project. OK, let's just get those points right. Let's get that up into the centre section. Let's tuck ourselves down into the right places. OK, and I'm going to cinch... That's great, that works really well. Cinch that back on itself. Take a few turns around. And then I'm going to put a half hitch to just tie that into place for the moment. So far, so good. That would be functional as it is. I want to try and replicate the binding effect that we've seen in some of the originals and I think that is done by nothing more complicated than choosing an outside one and wrapping around it, choosing an outside one and wrapping around it. Those of you who have ever done any knitting, uh, this is an e-wrap, this is basically what's, what's going on there. Uh, it's actually looking quite pretty. I'm not going to worry about catching every single one, just whichever thorn appears next. Let me see if I can get my hands into closer focus for you. That looks all right. So, a little bit of an E wrap. That's nice. I like that. I like that a lot. And this is quite satisfying, actually. 
really enjoying the effect this makes and the cordage feels lovely to work with and yes those thorns are spiky but I haven't punctured myself as yet so my hands are wandering around all over the place I'm trying to keep my focus on the bundle rather than on what the camera's doing nearly round and that's looking pretty pretty good right come on I think we want one around you definitely this is also doing is slightly splaying out the top there which I think is going to put a little bit of pressure on the center binding help stop things moving that's certainly the impression I'm getting at the moment right one more round there and then I think what we need to do now is just make sure those are still level pack things down into place and I think if I were to take this down to the bottom here and you can see something similar going on in one of the originals I'm just going to anchor that and I'm going to use my remaining bit to go around here a couple of times and then I think that's probably good I need to find a needle and run that up the inside don't go away so here I've gone and found a bone needle which I hope I'll be able to slide up into the inside I am going to thread my needle okay make sure that's as tight there as it can be and I think I just need to find somewhere that that will run up or run up the inside come on there you go oh, yes there we are and the tail end I will just wind into the middle of the bundle these do lock together quite well I'm toying with a bit more binding at the very top I'm not sure it really needs it okay there is my tool that binding makes me very very happy it doesn't take much to amuse me so there are 42 thorns in here approximately eight centimeters in total there's roughly 85 centimeters of two millimeter thick lime bass cordage and the idea now is that this can be held in my hand or like a small brush and we can use it to prepare fiber we've got to try it really haven't we there are several fibres that a tool like this could be used on. One of the ones that we're certain is in use at the date line and in the right areas is lime bast. Now, this is a lovely broad piece of lime bast, and yes, you can split it up by hand into the finer ribbons that you need for cordage. I did that when I made the cordage for this tool. But what if there's an easier way to do it? And one of the things we think this might be for is to help you split that bast into lovely thin regular ribbons oh look at that beautiful regular preparation of material absolutely gives you the best results when you're making cordage and pull that through look there's a little bit of waste there that's absolutely fine but what I've got left is very very nice fine ribbons which I can do the best cordage with and also twining because one of the things you find a lot at these early sites are twined fabrics I think for twining this is going to be completely wonderful I'm going to be also be testing it on flax I think there's no reason at all that the same principle won't work on flax I'm also going to be testing it, hopefully, on other bast fibres. So nettle, definitely, uh, possibly oak bast. And we're going to see what 
it really lends itself to there is absolutely no doubt and this is what other researchers have found that on line bass this is an incredibly useful tool oh pleased with that now i need to play with it now of course none of this research exists in isolation there are plenty of other really good researchers working on similar tools this is quite a nice recent article for those who are interested in lime bast in the neolithic this is by sabine karg came out uh last year and if i just show you very very briefly there we are there's one of the original tools and you can see that it's got the same spiral looping that I've tried on mine and this is their reconstruction. It's slightly simpler, nothing wrong with that, there are definitely simpler ones known. This is the site report for Eggleswell 3 which is one of the really important fairly early pile dwelling sites. Uh, this site report is available online these days, not the easiest thing to find and it's in German and my German's fairly terrible but it does include these wonderful images of the uh, thorn brushes that were found. There's quite a bit of variety in them. This one, and that's two sides of the same one, are actually double-ended. So some thorns pointed down, some down up, little fillet of wood holding them together. These are the ones though that I'm basing my reconstruction on. This particular one, can you see there's my sort of e-wrap of the cordage and some cordage around the bottom. I think this one's actually got some e-wrap at the bottom, which I haven't done on mine. Others are much simpler. They vary a lot in size. That's quite a slim bundle. That's really quite a chunky one. They're all within the proportions that you can hold in your hand. So it does seem to be that it's a type of object, not something that has to be exactly the same every single time. In the end, I made two of these. This is the one you saw me making and then those longer spikes that we put by earlier on we made a second one with both of them work brilliantly this is the sorts of results that we're getting I am so happy with this as a tool I think this is a bit of a game changer for getting absolutely beautiful cordage and really high quality twined textiles and basketry effects it doesn't stop there of course I have to write this up in a way that makes sense to a more academic community. But skill sharing and public engagement is also an incredibly important part of what I do. It's why I make these videos. So we took these to the first Neolithic event of the season so that people could try them out and I could show them to colleagues. Sneak view of everybody still with their cars and plastic boxes on site, but we are setting up for the Neolithic open day here at Brinkettley Dee on Anglesey. For those of you that don't know it, Brinkettley Dee is a rather amazing Neolithic tomb. It's one of those monuments where at the right time of year the sunlight will shine through the gaps. As well as talking to the public about the research that I'm doing, it's a fantastic chance to catch up with colleagues. So I'm talking to Vanessa Bunton here and we're comparing lime bass projects and trying out my tools. These aren't my only tools though, I'm actually working on a much wider toolkit and there will be more videos very, very soon going into more detail about the other things you can see in these pictures. But of course we all know that all textile tools are really for scratching the cat. That's it, cancel the dissertation, there's nothing left to learn, we know what they're for don't we Tesla? Yeah? Happy? Nice. Good boy. <laughs>